Hello everybody, this is Bud Rich. Um, I made a dark theme here uh, based on the Molokai colors. Um, I think I will try to use that for a while here, whatever. Um, and I was benchmarking a function here that I want to use in the Linklord script, which is more or less done now. I have experimented with, with a couple of things here and, and I think um, I have pinned down all the functionality here. Uh, and I tried to record while I was doing this uh, awk loop here, which fetches all the links. As you can see, it's not a, it's not a big uh, awk script here. It's a lot of comments here. So it's just uh, like uh, 10 lines or something without the comments. Um, but I, <laughs> every time I, I realized I had forgot like some weird edge case and, and the awk script just became weirder and weirder here. But uh, I guess it's interesting to see this. So I think we will do this in the uh, in this video. But first, also since it's the last day here now of the decade, actually, it's can you imagine that you know, 2020. It's uh, 2020. It's such so many years since I was born. You know, it it feels weird in a way. Um, I brought up this uh, blog here, which is uh, uh, or homepage. I guess it's not it's not really a blog. It's it, it's a really cool homepage. Uh, Kix Condor uh, is the author. I don't really know who 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 he is. I guess we can see that here. A CIA operations designed to amplify subculture link stuff. No, I don't. I don't know if, if this is a CIA operation anymore. I, I don't know. I, I I kind of assume that everything is a CIA operation. So uh, whatever. <laughs> I really don't think this is a CIA operation. These CIA jobs are secure. No one can prove the endeavor has failed. I don't know. Uh, but uh, this guy, cis uh, brained, real. I don't know. He's. Uh, I don't think we we share all all opinions, but I really like what he's doing with with this web page, and he he is very interested uh, in collecting in link collections and, and like the old internet or the weird internet maybe. And he created this list here. Uh, uh, he have this domain href.cool uh, where he collected the, the links of, of the decade. So I thought this page and that page will be, uh, here is the links of the decade. Uh, will be the tabs in my browser today and here we can see like some classics like troll a low man <laughs> and uh, some vapor wave you know and stuff like that but the just browsing this list you don't have to watch the videos or anything but but it's kind of nice to to get some sense of what has happened you know in these 10 years um, I think this is a good way to, to do so if you're yeah, this internet <laughs> junkie kind of person that at least I am. Um, and if you browse this Kix uh, Condor's site here, you you might end up at all kinds of, of strange places of the internet. Um, whatever. So that's the tabs in my browser. Um, and I just don't feel like doing a review of the decade myself really not sure what to say it's been a weird 10 years uh, that's that's one thing that's uh, for sure and i have experienced a couple of decades uh, so i can compare it uh, to at least uh, the two previous ones i, I was um, old enough um, and i think Overall, in general, this this is one of the craziest decades, and, and uh, not in a good way. Well, here here goes uh, me giving this decade a bit of a review, anyways. <clears throat> I think uh, this decade is very distinguishable um, 
you know, when we think now, it's easy now to think 90s, ah, that is very 90s aesthetics, you know, and even uh, uh, the, the first decade, the 2000, the first decade of the 2000, I don't know what to, what to call it, the zero zeros or whatever, the first 10 years of the millennia, uh, that also have some sort of a aesthetic in a way, it's a little bit more blurry uh, than, than the 90s, it's very, and also 80s of course and 70s, it's like, and I have always been like that. I have had had it very. I, I always liked like vintage stuff, especially when I was older. I was more or less obsessed with the, the 60s and the 70s. Um, and I can I, I can watch a photo uh, of a band or a concert or something, and can almost pin out that's uh, yeah that have to be around 67. Just looking at at the clothes and, and the vibe so to speak the aesthetics you know and you can almost do that with the 90s as well um, this decade maybe not as much in the fashion world so much has happened in a way you know in the beginning of the decade it was like <laughs> hipsters everywhere <laughs> weird mustaches and i guess uh, the, the last couple of years here have been the <clears throat> this uh extreme fashion in a way on, on the female side i'm thinking and of course i only have like internet references but it, i'm thinking of all the thoughts and, and stuff you know uh, but also uh, the male fashion there I, all i see is soy boys you know this bad beard open mouth uh, balding head at 25 years old you know that that that's that's the how, how i view this decade right now at least but what really marks this decade is of course the smartphones there's no doubt about it you know iphone was released 2008 became mainstream and with mainstream everyone had one 2009 and with everyone i mean like yeah everyone you know but of course, uh, uh, some countries, but whatever, you know what I mean. It it was very very quick, uh, fast, and and it was like everyone knew what it was. Everyone was using it, and this. I, I think the smartphone. Everyone walking around with these stupid phones uh, that we, <laughs> for some weird reason, how did that came about? You know, the word smartphone is is it Apple who 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 came up with it or how how did that term stuck also this is not just a phone this is a smartphone look at the enormous screen weird thing um, and that combined that uh, what are we going to use these smartphones for facebook facebook that's that's this decade and and it have um, it have really, really, really. It it have probably affected our culture more than the music did in the sixties, uh, or uh, the cocaine in the eighties. You know, the or yeah, and other uh, every decade have this thing that really affects the whole culture. You know, it's often drugs and music, but this decade, well, I guess. Uh, it's not that far off from a dr drug either. These social media upcome is uh, things, you know, and that mentality. It, it it is like. I think we are very different people this decade than we were the decade before, as a culture, as a whole, you know. Uh, and. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of a sad decade, uh, and meanwhile all everything feels like it's going insane and maybe there is a relation you know people spend all their waking hours uh, collecting upcomings and the world is turned upside down i i don't know but it's uh, it, it it's been almost a scary scary at at many many occasions in a way uh, the turns that the, the extreme uh, turns our culture has taken this decade um, so we'll see what happens the next 10 years here um, whatever 
let's not talk more about that. I have some more uh, thoughts. Uh, I watched uh, Lamduk's uh, um, 2020 prediction, Linux predictions uh, earlier this day. And I could make a response to that, but I think I don't. Uh, instead, let's write an awk loop here. Um, yeah, I will save my progress here to the buds version of this. Because I've added quite a lot of things. And then we take this is where we left off. Save that to linklord.sh. And I... As I, as I said in the beginning of the video, we will add now the function here um, that will uh, find all the links in a markdown document here. That is also why I uh, changed color scheme in the first place, because it was so hard to spot the, the square brackets with the light theme for some reason. So I thought let, maybe it's time to do a dark theme. Because inside the square brackets is where the links are that we are looking for, that we want to uh, inject into the document, so to speak. I don't remember if I... Well, I have to have shown you in the first video, right? Uh, the demo, so to speak, of this, uh, where I inject, uh, found links and injected references like uh, here, for example. Here is a reference to that first link. And I guess I have the home page here also, see. Markdown gets uh, uh, rendered as HTML, link, link. Link has a reference down here. But if a link doesn't have a reference, if we remove this, uh, then the link doesn't get rendered. And we, but we, we only see the square brackets here, it's normal text. Uh, and that is what I want to make this script do, find all unreferenced links, see if we have a reference in our database and inject it here in the document. Um, and links is, as I said, always uh, inside brackets. But uh, brackets can contain a lot of things that we are not interested in. So I have added a bunch of stuff here to, to this document to, so we can uh, test it. Right, let's start. Link Lord. We do this when we pass a file as the argument to linklord, then we append links here. So I guess I have the function down here somewhere. Echo, well, let's do this local, uh, trg is equal to $1. Then we can echo trg and trg is the file we will search we want to search uh, link lord well also i can show you here this is the same directory here this directory here uh, so if we do link lord this page for example which is the one we will use here now we just echo out the argument here which is this page um, i have also made notes Yeah. And also I, I made a couple of takes of this, but the orc stuff just got weirded out all the time. But now I got the, the solution, so if I need to cheat, we got it there. Don't worry. And this might also be a longer video here. I, I think I want to make this whole thing in, in one sitting here. Um, so... We want to parse uh, the file here that we pass with awk. But maybe first we should uh, make some sort of test to make sure it is uh, a markdown file. A markdown can have, I think the only two extensions are md or the word markdown. But uh, then I don't think there is any rules uh, about the, the, the capital. Um, yeah, if you use um, capital letters or lowercase. So, 
we need to make a, a case insensitive test here for the, the file extension. So we could store the file extension as uh, ext is equal to trg remove everything from the beginning of that variable uh, up until the last dot. So ext here will be the extension. Oh. Maybe it doesn't work here when I declare these as local variables. I just want to test if this works. If I put exe, that would just be interesting to see. No, well, I guess we need to put this on its own line. Otherwise, it's fine to declare. You, you could see I didn't even get an error from Shellcheck there. Um, there, now it says MD. Mm. And we want to test if it is MD or um, Markdown, case insensitive. TRG, and then we just do comma comma, that will uh, make it all uh, lowercase. Uh, if that, and then we do a regular expression for MD or Markdown. or exit um, trg not a valid file type or something and we should also test for ext here uh, and then it prints the ext we could also test here with because you can do either make the variable all lowercase or you can also make make it all uppercase like this and now it will print MD uppercase and if you do just one carrot it will just capitalize the first uh, character can be good to know um, okay but this isn't 100% perfect since uh, Unix system doesn't have to use MD extension, whatever, whatever, but I think this is fine and it's good now when we are testing here, but before, it could happen that we try to pass a, a non-markdown file here. Um, now we parse this file with uh, awk, we parse trg. And we want to print all the links, which always is in between square brackets. So, as we have done before in this video series, we will use brackets as the field separator here. Writing it like this, 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 there. Um, and if we use brackets as field separator, we take this line for example, and this by the way is one single line here. Uh, if bracket is the field separator, this will be $1 field separator, $2 field separator, $3 field separator, $4 field separator. And here is a peculiar edge case here, because now we have two field separators next to each other, then we will have one field uh, that is empty, but it is still a field in between these, but that field kind of doesn't exist. It's This is where I got stuck uh, when I tried to make the other takes here, so that's why I'm <laughs> really into this here. But we have field one up until here, field two, field three, field four, invisible field five, Field 6 is this uh, single uh, 1 here, uh, and that then we have field 8, the rest of the, or field 9, I, I guess, the rest of the line. Um, and if you paid attention, field 1, field 2 is the bracket, field 4 is this link, field 6 is this, I guess it's field 7 then, the, the rest here. Uh, so all um, 
words within brackets are uh, in even numbered fields two four six and so on uh, and the rest of this document is, we are not interested in anything else except things inside brackets so we are we could could uh, program that like uh, we only want to print even numbered fields uh, so let's see if we can make a function here could first make a test here just to see that the line contains anything and if it does uh, then we want to print every second field starting at field 2 so we do a for loop uh, setting a variable initialize it to uh, 2 uh, then it's is it semicolon now or is it regular colon in awk I think it's regular uh, i is less than the number of fields so uh, and then we increment maybe it is semicolon um, and then we want to print uh, the current index in this loop. We start at 2, uh, so we want to print $i. And we can actually just write that, $i. Um, then this will be translated to the value of, of that, which is 2 first, then 4, and so on. And I think this will work, if it isn't semicolons instead of colons there. Or commas. Yeah, it is semicolon. I don't know why I, I <laughs> my brain stopped uh, understanding that. And here we can see now, maybe we should change uh, Sasquatch for X size. Look here, eyes. Uh, it doesn't feel like this is working. No, this something is uh, wrong here. For i ah, that's right. We increment by one. We want to increment by two. And then you write this i plus equals two. That will increment the variable i with two. And now it only prints uh, things within brackets. So that's uh, kind of part one here. Now we want to remove everything in this list uh, that we aren't. I wonder what this is. Um, and also, ah, no, okay, that's right. But it's okay. Um, now we want to remove um, those um, bracketed uh, elements here or things that we aren't interested in. Um, and there are a couple of, of, of different things that we aren't interested in. The first one, the obvious one here, this part here, this is uh, Hugo specific YAML front matter. Um, but front matter like this is not completely uncommon in the Markdown world, but YAML uh, is, that isn't even Markdown. This is a different, um, I think that's also a markup language. I think actually that's what YAML stands for. Uh, uh, yet another markup language or something. Um, and yeah, Markdown is also a markup language, but whatever. Okay, so things inside the YAML here can contain uh, brackets. And in YAML, bracket means uh, this is a list of, uh, yeah, here, for tags. So this is uh, a list containing three tags. It have a completely different meaning than uh, brackets in Markdown. And we could have uh, more uh, brackets in this YAML. Uh, uh, it's uh, quite common that you have that in, in a Hugo project like this. So we would like to ignore everything in the YAML. Um, that's uh, one type here. Let's see, I think I've written them down. Ignore uh, non-interesting brackets. We have in YAML. Uh, another uninteresting uh, bracket is, uh, it is actually a link that we have here. Here we have a link to Hugo. Uh, it's after the image. Here it is. Uh, and this link uh, is um, referenced immediately like this uh, by putting a parenthesis after uh, the bracket here 
and then the URL inside the uh, parentheses. We don't need to uh, test uh, these links at all since they are already referenced. Uh, we should ignore them as well. Uh, then we have this uh, complicated one here. Um, this link here, GitHub, uh, is also referenced, just like Hugo here is referenced with the URL, but GitHub here is uh, referenced with a reference pointer, you could call this. Uh, and what we are interested in in this case is actually the reference pointer. Right now it's one because that's how you most of the time use this or it's common to use it like that. You have a reference for one. Um, I don't know if I have the link to it. Yeah, I have it here. So it should be here somewhere. Here it is. And then you write uh, the reference uh, just like any other URL reference like this. Um, but this uh, doesn't have to be an integer one like this. It could be another word uh, like this. And now the link will not get rendered here. But if we change this to another word, oh yeah, under word, now it will work. And that means these reference, <laughs> reference, reference links uh, it's also something that we could search for in the database if, if they aren't referenced. I know I say in reference uh, a lot of times, but I kind of have to do that. And then what's the next thing that we are not interested in? Drum roll. References. So actual references like this. Uh, we don't need to search for, for this when we find a line that looks like this, where we have a reference with a URL. Then we don't search our database either for, for that URL. And we also, when we find this place, because this might, uh, in Åker, we are searching, 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 ah, about labs, this might be a link that we need to search in the database. But we don't do it here. We collect all interesting uh, uh, potential link targets, so to speak, here. And then we find GitHub, ah, this is maybe interesting, but then we see, no, it's a reference, but because we can see that because it's uh, a adjacent square bracket word. But then we store this link as well, or potential link. And continue here, find this, store that, and then we have an image here, which is also a weird thing. Um, but then after a while we find here other word, uh, that is the reference here. And we've, when we find the reference to that link, uh, then we remove this from the list of uh, potential suspects, so to speak you get what I mean. So this is a special special thing here when we when we find a reference. Even if it's not interesting, it's good that we can blank out or remove a link from our search list. And then we have images which you write like this. Uh, here I also tested to, to make a reference image link blah blah blah. So this is quite complicated. Here we could actually Either we, we just ignore all link words here, or image uh, links, or we keep them and then we can search for image references as, as well. But I think we should just remove any image uh, uh, block like this. That, that will be the easiest. I think so. But we could potentially also store image links in the database, but I don't know. Not interested. Interesting. Links already referenced. Yeah, that was this example. You know, first it's interesting, then we find the rest reference, then it's uh, all of a sudden not not interesting anymore. Um, then we got inline code here, uh, which is uh, this one here. You can see it. Um, here is that block. Here we can see it's an inline code. It's easier to see now. It's monospaced font and stuff. That means this is like code blocks and inside code blocks all uh, markdown formatting uh, is removed. So this is also uh, links we should ignore. And this also becomes a little bit tricky since uh, they look exactly the same as any other line here for awk. It doesn't know anything about markdown and, and so on, you know. But we will take care of that as well. And then we have um, uh, big code blocks uh, like these, so, which is often used to 
Here we can also add uh, a specified syntax for these code blocks. Uh, here it's CSS, for example, is specified here. Um, and these can also contain uh, brackets. This one doesn't, but uh, I know one of these does at least, or a couple of them. Here, here we have this, this uh, JavaScript block here. Here we have brackets. It will uh, get weirded out here when it finds these brackets as well. So we have to make it so that it, it, it will ignore these types of code blocks, which we can also easily distinguish here. They start with three backticks. But they can also start, uh, we can also write it like this with three tildes. It mean, means the same thing. Um, but if you start it with the tilde, I think you have to end it with the tildes. Um, yeah. That's all uh, the edge cases here. Uh, otherwise, everything else is interesting. Links. So let's see if we can clean this list up here, uh, checking off these uh, checkboxes one by one. They, this is actually quite fast to do this. The only tricky one, complicated one is this. So let, let's take this last of all and you will see. And uh, this is one that I didn't have from the start. I, I made the, like, maybe I should look quickly look in the markdown reference to see that I haven't forgotten anything. And I was like, hmm, these links, okay, I have to add that and then but when we have two field separators next to each other, then everything gets so complicated. Whatever, you will soon see what I mean. YAML. Uh, YAML starts and ends with uh, three uh, dashes like this. Uh, and it always, it's always the first uh, part of the document. I think so, maybe... Let's see if Hugo gets weirded out here. If I, Hugo, are you weirded out? Now that I think about it, we can add things before, and then it broke the whole thing there. Uh, yeah. Let, let's just say this. This is the rule. The YAML starts, and as you can see, it didn't render the YAML correctly here now. Now it didn't work, so it stopped being a YAML when it's not defined at the top of the document. So that's in, important. Um, so if the first line of the document is three dashes, then we have a YAML. Uh, then we ignore everything till we find three new dashes uh, on its own on, on a line like this. Could start by defining it like uh, something like this. If a line contains only three uh, dashes, uh, then we could increment a variable, we can call it dash count increment that by one. Um, let's also look here, let's run link load again here. Maybe hide x size also there. there. So here we have the output here. And the YAML part, it's only th this first line that we want to ignore here. Uh, and we do this loop here and printing uh, the, the found blocks uh, here. So we could add a test here uh, and check if um, dash count is more than one, meaning it's two or more. Because that's another thing in Markdown, uh, these three dashes can appear at multiple places in the document and stuff. So, but if we just, um, we, we don't care, we just keep on counting them. Uh, but uh, the only thing we are interested in if, is if it's more than one. And if it is, then we start our uh, um, printing and searching for links. No, that didn't work. Um, ah. Into ampersands here. So the line must contain something and dash count have to be larger than one. And then now we can see we don't get that first uh, YAML part here. We will modify this a bit uh, later, but it's good good enough for now. 
YAML. Yeah, we don't want to include um, yeah, direct uh, URL reference or, or what it's the, the actual term is, you know. Uh, these ones. So if we execute that now, it should hide uh, this and this and yeah, there's there's a lot of these here. We have uh, four of them also. So we can figure out a way to to exclude um, bracketed words uh, with adjacent parentheses, and it's kind of easy. If the next field here, uh, let's say, see here, uh, Hugo here, that's field two. Uh, if the next field, field three, that starts here after uh, the, the square bracket. So the first character of field three is uh, uh, opening parentheses. And that's true for all of this. So that's, that's uh, the test we need to do. If the next field starts with the opening parentheses, don't include it. Um, but we have to do that inside the loop here uh, and do this test for each and every found field. But remember, it only it loops every second field and, and, and it doesn't do this loop many times at all in, in the parse, parsing here. So this, this is fine, it's not bloated at all. Um, if, let's see now, uh, the next field also, this, this is a bit weird, so $i that is the current field here. First it's two, then it's four, then it's five, or six, and so on. Uh, so the next field is i plus one, but we don't want to increment i or anything here or change the value of i because uh, that uh, will mess up the loop for us here. So we could do something stupid like this, i plus one, that will be the next field. Uh, and then we do a regular expression test to see if it's uh, what we want. We want to print fields that um, doesn't start uh, with with a where the next field doesn't start with a, a, a parenthesis. We can do an inverted character class here, like this. Uh, so if the first character of the next field. Um, it's not the parenthesis print dollar i. So now I think we will get a shorter list here. It will at least remove um, Hugo here. But I think it will also remove this one and a couple of more here. Yeah, a lot shorter. Uh, 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 uh. References and yeah, for, first we could do it the, the easy PC way, and that is just uh, references. That is almost the same thing as uh, parentheses here. If we find a reference to a link, uh, field two is this word, then field three starts here. It always starts at the colon, just as uh, the, the other references there. So if the first field of the next block is a colon, ignore it. So the easiest way would be to just add a colon here to this character class. And this, this will kind of work. Now we can see it's an even shorter list here. Uh, maybe it's difficult to, to see which one removed here, but um, Budlabs, Otherworld, exclamation mark, hero, on on their word here we can see here here is the first uh, occurrence of the link uh, and here is the second so you can see it, it um, this is the reference and that is not included here so this kind of works um, but remember I talked about that when we find the reference um, if we find a reference link we should also remove um, the link it references from from our list here so instead of printing now we store um, we create an array instead, we can call it links. Uh, the element of the array will be the same as the current title here. We could just set, set it to one now, um, for now. Then we create the end block in our awk uh, script here, where we loop uh, links 
four uh, K in links. It's it's just common. I, maybe you wonder why am I using K here? It's very common to do so when you when you loop an array. It's like a, a standard, or almost like using I uh, when when you do loops like this. It's very common to just use K, and I I, I often do that myself. For uh, I guess it's K for key, and here it's I for integer. But you could have any character or even another uh, a whole wor word here we could also write key if we wanted to uh, and that means this will loop uh, links here and for every um, key in links it will set the variable here now key to yeah the actual key here so the print key Test this now, we get the same results here, but now it prints the, the things here instead of here. Um, now, I uh, to, to remove um, elements from, from this array, when we find a reference, it's very easy because the reference will have the same name then as the key in the array, uh, the links array here. So we can do if, and it's almost the same same uh, one here except we don't do an inverted class and we don't include parentheses so here we just test for could even remove the, the character class here if if the next element starts with with a colon um, delete links i and then we can also remove the colon here and you do an else if here that should make the script slightly more efficient here. I don't know. Yeah, we write it like this. We can refactor it a bit more later. So let's see if this makes any difference to our list. Uh, yeah, now it removed on the word here. Uh, it's the only thing it removed, I think, uh, because, uh, yeah, it found the reference and then it also removed the link it referenced. All right. References. Images. Images. Uh, in Markdown, you write them exactly as you would write uh, another link, and you can use the references and everything for images as well. Um, the only thing you do to, to indicate that it should render it as an image instead of a um, link, meaning th uh, th it, it changes to an IMG tag in HTML here, um, instead of a, a link, which is a A element. We should see that here is an image, and here we can also see the image ins inside an A element because this Im image is actually inside a link reference like this. I, I know this is one of the things that people are most annoyed about uh, with Markdown. It's not it's not clean and pretty and particularly uh, smart. This linking and well, the linking I think is fine, kinda. It it could also be better. Uh, it is actually made better in most other uh, com competing um, mar markup uh, languages. But especially images, the, it, it gets really messy very easily. Um, and I think what we can do is just remove uh, uh, these from, from the, the text that we are parsing with awk. Uh, because remember, we don't change anything in the document. We just parse it here now and print what we find. So we can uh, can modify the stream, so to speak, in, in the awk script and then remove uh, these things. So everything that starts with an exclamation mark, opening bracket, uh, text, closing bracket, remove, remove that stuff from the stream. And that is something we do before uh, the for loop here. Uh, then we can do a g sub 
meaning re replace all occurrences of this uh, in, in uh, something. And the occurrences we are searching for is uh, exclamation mark, then opening bracket, which we have to put in a character class, which is also brackets. I know it's, it's a bit weird. Uh, and then uh, text, which you might think you could write like this, but it will not work. And then a closing bracket, which we also put in a character class. But this text here, we have to be more uh, specific when we specify it, because dot, it matches any character, and star here means uh, one or zero or, or more of any character. And that, uh, that is a stupid uh, regular expression here. We can be much more speci specific. And what we are actually looking for is, it can actually be any character. And, and I think that's almost true. We can add any, any characters as the link title here, except closing bracket. When we find a closing bracket in, in, in this uh, link title, uh, then that means, of course, close this link. So, so we make a, a new character class here. Um, also, uh, that we negate, so everything that is not a closing bracket. And then we add a plus also, so one or more characters that isn't a closing bracket, and then finally a closing bracket. This is the regex. Replace that with nothing. We don't care about links. And then we can add the third argument here, which is, and, and right now we, we are searching the whole uh, uh, record here. The whole line and then that also makes it so that we can we can test for for brackets like we are doing here even if it is the field separator uh, g sub and many other commands here uh, defaults to dollar zero it's a, it is a default thing to search in so you can actually leave this out so testing now there, now it removed the exclamation mark, and um, yeah, if we had some other image uh, reference there or something, whatever, it, it worked. Link with whatever. Links already referenced, we, we kind of did that uh, with the delete links here. Then inline code, that is almost the same thing here as uh, removing image links. Because inline code, that is uh, text that is in between uh, backticks like this. So here, instead of searching for bracket, everything that's not a bracket, closing bracket, here we search for backtick, text that is not backtick, backtick. And just remove that from the stream. Or, uh, yeah. So we could copy this. Uh, but now we change. Ah, we write a new one. It gets so messy with all one million brackets like this. So, or I don't think we need a character class there either. So back tick, but then we need a character class. Same here. Uh, everything that's not the back tick, and then one or more characters that's not the back tick. Ending with a backtick, replace with nothing. Um, here, here, uh, hero is uh, the 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 one that we are hoping to not see if this worked. It's the only link that is in a inline block like this. Testing now. Hero is uh, removed. Now we are getting close to our final list here. Code blocks. Code blocks starts with three backticks or uh, three tildes. And then it may or may not have um, the name of the syntax. It may or may not be a space here if I'm not mistaken. I think this works just as fine. Uh, so we can only test here if the line starts with three backticks or three tildes. Um, then we know we are in a code block um, and it ends with the same uh, thing. Oh. 
Ah, no, maybe we should do this properly now. Um, I haven't done it like this before, but it shouldn't be a, a, a big deal. Um, we do a match, use the function match here. Uh, a match, uh, th this is a bit annoying in my opinion. When you write sub and g sub, then you write the expression first and then the haystack where you want to search uh, later. But with match, it's the opposite. Here you write first what you are searching in, the whole record, um, then the regular expression. Now we are searching for uh, either records that start with three backticks or three tildes. Uh, and I would also like to store this uh, just so we can see uh, or this is a bit overkill when I think about it but whatever now I've gotten this far um, and match uh, also takes an optional third argument which is the name of an array to store all the matches in uh, I usually call it MA for match array um, I wonder if we can do this. I think so. Then we can set a variable here to, to code block is equal to MA1, which will be either three backticks or three tildes. Uh, th this was a bad idea when I think about it. We, we do it the simple way instead. Sorry. We do one of these searching for like, like we did here. The line starts with three backticks or three tildes. Um, if we find that, we set a cold block count here. Cold block plus plus. So. That means uh, first code block is uh, undefined, uh, but it, if we would do an arithmetic test, a math test, uh, then it would be zero. Um, if we look here at the code, this is the first code block here. And right now, uh, code block variable is undefined. It finds three backticks, code block is one. It finds three backticks, code block is two, code uh, or markdown to process code block three ignore this code block four process code block five ignore this code block six uh, and just as with with the brackets uh, we 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 know that um, only even if code block has an even numbered value uh, we parse and zero is also an even numbered value, you know, or maybe it's whatever um, So zero then one ignore so on This can be written like this uh, And we do the test here as well To see if we should do our for loop for each of fields and stuff uh, Code block percentage two equals zero. That means code block divided by two, but when you use percentage, it will instead return the remainder. So if you if you divide two by two, you will get the remainder will be zero. But if you divide three by two, how is it now? Then the remainder will be one. Maybe it's not exactly like that. I, I'm bad at math. Uh, that's why I like to program, so I don't have to know all these things perfectly. I let the computer do it, but this is simple, you know. I think you understand. hope you do. Um, and this will probably also work. And maybe when the, the variable the first time, uh, before we have found any code blocks, the uh, code block here is undefined. But I guess that will be zero as well here. Whatever. Let's test if it works. 
didn't work. Yeah, because I misspelled it. There, now we only get these guys here. Now we are close. Yeah, I think there are a couple of more edge cases here now when I think about it that I didn't haven't written down because they are quite easy to, to miss here. But we will fix them when we fix this. Um, go back here. Okay, this is a special case here now. GitHub. Well, uh, maybe it's because we have this reference. Re let's remove this because I, I would like to, to be sure that we print the right word here. And it kind of works here as it is because GitHub, remember, is uh, we don't want to, to um, test for that because it is already referenced. Uh, by a, a link reference uh, and the reason it doesn't uh, show up here in the list because it should because we'd never test for anything like this here uh, there is also this link here am I included uh, is a line here that is not included here uh, and that is because uh, github here and am I included doesn't pass our test here Um, because we test that the next field uh, should start uh, uh, shouldn't be either a colon or a parenthesis but uh, these guys here the next field here as I talked about it is kind of undefined uh, both of these we cannot really test for empty string here it, it, it isn't perfect Instead, we test if the next field is defined, is what I have found uh, is, is the one that, that works best here. <clears throat> so if we start with that, just so we get this am I included, included in our list here. Mm. So this is true. Uh, either this or um, if the next block is not defined. Let's see what we get now. Yes, now we get, did get am I included and we also did get github and we did get uh, under world here. Wonder if this github comes from a different place now. Because it kind of works now. Maybe this is enough. Maybe I was uh, overworking this in my other build here. Is this maybe works here. The next field is undefined. Mm. Let's change this GitHub text here to whatever. I just want to see if it is included or not. Uh, it is. It is. Ah, this is this is also a thing with awk. Uh, what we are doing now? We store the links in an array and then we uh, do a, a loop here and print the keys in the array. You, you can never be sure exactly which order it will print this array. It might uh, shuffle them up sometimes, which it did here, as you can see. Here it printed GitHub here, and here it printed the same key, even if it had a different name here. You can set this sort order and stuff, but uh, we, we don't really need to do that. Uh, but we don't want this one to get included, remember, because it is referenced. Um, so... But both of these uh, have the next field is undefined. The difference here is uh, that um, this is the last field. But here it isn't. If we have a reference like this, then it, this the field that we are not interested in here, the field we are we want to filter out, is never the last field. Uh, but if 
the link is the last field, we want to include it even if the next field is undefined. And it is undefined because it doesn't exist. But here it kind of exists anyways. It, it's super weird this. I, I, it's hard to explain because I barely know how it works. But uh, if we could uh, write it so, so that we always include if, if it is the last field but not if it isn't. And, and uh, to test if um, it is the last field, um, we can use uh, the built-in variables here. NF uh, is the number of fields on each uh, record, uh, and I is the current field. So let's just first see what, what these are, because we cannot just compare i and n f here. One of them is higher than the other, I, I believe. So print n f uh, and i. Uh, also, let's skip this and print dollar i also like this so here we can see the first one uh, the number of fields here are seven and uh, this is field two we're still at the same record here seven 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 um, then we have um, yeah here it is github this is the one that's interesting you know or, or one of the one uh, those who are interesting Seven six three two whatever am I included seven four no oh, no no it's the one above yeah 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 am I included is three two sorry for that this belongs to this, this is uh, github, the one we want to remove, but this is the one we want to keep. And here we can see nf is uh, um, one more than the number of, than the current field. Uh, but that isn't true here. But it is true here, for hero patterns, these are some other ones uh, that uh, we have further down in the markdown. So, if nf is one more than i include, and we do that test here, so if the next field is undefined and nf Uh, uh, either we, we write this and we, we do this nf is equal to i plus one and here to make it clear I grouped this into one statement so this and this must be undefined this must be true or this must be true <laughs> I know did it work? Yes. Now we can see that gits borta is gone, but in included the others. And here, uh, these two, they are probably somewhere further down here. Theme components, maybe not. Whatever, maybe they were included here. No. Whatever. It can it, it works at least. You can see hero patterns, figlet, zero is the last one. Ah again I, I looked at the wrong line here. Hero patterns is is uh, is the one. And hero patterns is also the last field here on, on, on the line. Whatever, I think it works. Fine now, we have taken care of all edge cases and we have created a list here. 
they're already up to an hour but as I said I want to complete this but this is by far the hardest part here to, to when we got this list then it's easy smooth sailing from from here on out remove this stupid prints and store it in our array instead let's look at the output again Ah, nice calm output so these are all the links that we want to um, see if we have references for in our database um, also between videos here I mentioned that in the last one I have added a couple of more uh, links here now to the database um, I, I crawled some some awesome lists uh, and got a bunch of links here it's uh, somewhere around 8000 links now a lot of them are, are kind of broken like this but it doesn't matter there are um, about 8000 um, records in in our link database here and there are some some forbidden characters and stuff it it, it was a dirty dirt hack just to to get this uh, list here just to, to have something to test for uh, but it's good enough for us to to use it uh, for testing here and i could also do some benchmark marks and i was actually surprised uh, how fast uh, the, it works having uh, a database with on with this size uh, actually a lot faster than I thought it would so um, I don't think it is any problem to have tens of thousands of links 50,000 links shouldn't be a problem at all you shouldn't notice any any anything it takes about uh, 50 milliseconds uh, extra now with 8,000 links compared to uh, 15 links as we had before so so the mo mo most of the program is actually the other stuff and here we can also see this 13 milliseconds it takes to parse this markdown document it's awk you know it's, it's kind of an incredible program in a way because this is not a trivial thing to find these exact links here and make sure not to include the other stuff here and it is quite a lot of text here it searches everything with the code blocks and everything you know but if you write the tests intelligently uh, to, to not include the code blocks uh, and stuff then then it is fast but of course, it, de it, it depends on if, if you have a document with where every other word is a complicated link, it have to do all tests every time, you know, then it of course piles up on the milliseconds, but it shouldn't take that long. Nothing to worry about. Um, with references. Use brackets as field separator. Okay, to get this whole database now into our walk here and, and use it as a test. And this is something I also have been thinking a lot about how to do this to make it as efficient as possible. That's also why I store the links in Markdown format like this. Uh, it makes it much... Uh, we, we, so we need to do as little as possible with these files when we, uh, when we um, par parse them. Uh, to include these in in this awk here, we could of course uh, do what we sometimes do, um, add variables here on, on the command line, but that just gets too weird here since it's 8000 <laughs> files here. Uh, what you can do is uh, add multiple files here to, to execute this awk, awk function on. Uh, and we could just include all the files. And we do that um, by using our good friend awk, well, no, no, find, uh, find in linklord deed um, not name dot star so everything that's not a dot file uh, we should also add a min depth one or maybe we don't need min depth but whatever uh, and we only search for type f so this should list all files in link lord deed here and add it here uh, as file arguments if i if i'm not 
mistaken. Um, now our loop here, or I, th I actually think the program will work now because it tests here if dash count is more than one, which it will not be till it find the first dashes here in in uh, in this file. Let's see if this works. I'm not sure. No. Ah, now I know. Uh, we don't do this. Uh, we store this list of links uh, or files uh, in an array instead by using map file, which is a bash built in command. Um, and map file, it takes uh, the map file and then the name of the array you want to store it in. We can call it files. Uh, and then by default, it uses standard in here. So we could, it, it, I think it will work if we do this. But it is actually not recommended to do this. Um, the recommended way is to write it like this. To make a file descriptor out of this command and set that as standard input here for map file. It has something to do with like variables in pipes or whatever. It's it's kind of weird, and I, and this is also what I did the, those uh, benchmark tests for to see if, uh, if if it made any performance difference at all using this method or another. But there were almost no difference whatsoever. And I tested this, looped this, all these files, added them to an array and looped that and did it a thousand times. So it added like 8,000 links uh, to an array, then unset array, then do it again and do that uh, 10,000 times I think I looped it or maybe 1,000 times. So it, it was kind of a stable be benchmark and it was almost no difference whatsoever using this method. Just to be sure here, um, and when we are doing this, we could even because we can also specify a field separator here to map file. By default, it's a new line, and uh, find here will will actually print each file on a new line. But if you read um, uh, too many Stack Overflow um, answers, then you will realize that um, that's not perfect because a file. A file name can actually contain new lines. To avoid uh, that and almost any other uh, kind of, of edge case, you could separate the output here with uh, a null character, which you have to write like this: print null or print null, print zero, and then you set that as the delimiter here and a null character is written like this with map file here. So this will work and it's uh, actually much more secure here. It's the best field separator in the world, but same here, if you read too many Stack Overflow uh, stuff, then you will realize that uh, uh, null characters are, are very um, unreliable in the shell and stuff. You have to be really careful and it's and, and this stuff here it's actually not supported uh, prior to bash version 4.4 .4, I think and this uh, option is only available in GNU fine. So you know you get into this mm, whatever you do whatever you choose uh, one side of your loose uh, situation here but let's do it like this. But it would actually work without this and without the print zero, it will work as long as we don't have uh, new lines in our file names, which we know that we don't, but whatever. Now I showed you both uh, methods there. Uh, another thing that's really good uh, to, well, now we kind of don't need to do that. Whatever, you can also add the T option here, which will remove the trailing uh, field separator from each record here, because yeah, map file is kind of weird, and especially when you have uh, the default new line, then it will actually add a new line character to each element in, in the array. So if you don't use this field separator, the null field separator, which you so often you cannot do it because uh, here we can do it because find have this print zero uh, um, function or option, but a null uh, character is uh, is an illegal character <laughs> in in 
almost everywhere in in Unix except inside C programs. Almost, it's it's weird. It's it's a long. It's a it's a story in itself. Uh, okay, but now we will have an array here called files, and then we add use that as the argument here for files. Uh, files at quote. But it is referenced here. This is normally when I print zero. Okay, we cheat a bit here then. Read array, maybe it's the dash T. Files, find, min depth, not name, that stuff. Type f print zero, whatever. It's the same. Here I use read array, and read array is just another name because I guess first it was called map file, but then they they also added uh, the option to write map file as read array. But they do the same thing. But here I actually use the t option. It might be that that was causing the, the issues also. Uh, let's see if it was. Syntax or command. Probably some quotes somewhere. You probably saw it, but I couldn't. But this didn't work either. Ah, because we are inside the orc here. I'm I'm stupid. Now it would work. So it would probably have worked before also if I just put the command at the right place. And there, now you can see, now it took 30 milliseconds, but we actually uh, included all lines, all files in, in awk here now, and it parses each and every one of them. Um, but it will never do anything, you know, because it looks for these things, uh, the, the dash count and, and, and stuff here. Um, but we actually want to um, do something in those files, of course, otherwise we wouldn't include them. Uh, and instead of searching in that array here, when we loop, when we loop uh, the collected links, uh, we, we do this. Uh, I think it's a good, good way here. We could test here if uh, dash count is less than one uh, meaning yeah th this is because uh, you can you can see this now since we are adding a bunch of files here this array expands to all uh, link files here um, and then trg and then you can picture this awk loop it it um, it will keep the the variables and stuff you know uh, so dash count will be less than one throughout all of these files, but as soon as it encounters the, the YAML, then uh, dash count is not less than one. Um, but if that is true, and we have the same field separator here, you know, so that means that $2 inside these link files is the title. And that is that is what we are looking for, you know, matching this title with the found titles here. Yeah, and here, a good example. 
Figlet is one of the links we are looking for. Uh, so we create another array here with uh, that we can call uh, DB for database. Uh, and then we store dollar two. So uh, the title that is equal to dollar zero. Dollar zero is the whole line, but if we look here, dollar um, zero, the whole whole line, that is uh, in a markdown reference format, and that that is exa exactly what we want to in, uh, append to our document here. Append all missing references. So we we want to append this whole thing, and that's why I have uh, made it like this. So we, so we don't. We don't need to do anything since remember it's 8,000 links now, but it could be 50,000 links. And the only test we do is to test this if dash count is less than one. Um, and then we don't do any formatting whatsoever on, on, the, on the line. We already got $2 by, by our normal uh, field separator and everything. And I actually think uh, in the long run here, we, we, we save quite a lot of time by, by doing this as efficient as possible. Mm. And then we do the test here. When we add things to our array here, um, instead of storing $1 here, uh, or just a 1, we could just test if uh, $i here, if that because this is the title of a link here that we w that we are interested in finding. Uh, so we, if that link is in the database, it should be called db $i. So we could do a test here if um, $i in db. If that is true. Uh, links dollar i is equal to db dollar i, and this is the full line of that uh, um, key. Um, this is also kind of important, and I, I, I'm not sure if, if uh, I learned this uh, right now, uh, but I noticed when I was reading up uh, on orc stuff that. Um, if you want to test that something is in in an array, we could also do this here, and it might look like it works. Uh, let's let's do this. Uh, this test will also work, and it will seem like it does the same thing, but it is uh, actually a, a, a big difference here. Uh, and a lot of people do this mistake. It, you write the test like this to see if this uh, index exists in the database. DB dollar i is not equals to, to nothing. But what happens when you do this test is that it will actually create. Um, uh, this test will fail if this is empty in in the array here. Uh, so, so we would get the correct results. This would kind of work, but uh, when we do this test, it will actually create this index in this array here uh, with, with a null um, value, and that that is sometimes very very bad. When it is, uh, now it doesn't really matter because we don't loop this DB array or anything. Uh, afterwards here, but that could happen. Uh, but it, when you use this other way to test if dollar i in db, then it will not create that uh, new element. And I also think this is a less expensive test here. You know, it doesn't search the database here now. We don't have to loop the database for each link or anything. We just see is this a value here? It's a boolean, you know, true, false, no, yes, bong, bang. It's a very, very uh, simple, yeah, trying to keep it as simple as possible here while we can, even if this stuff here is not super simple. Now it prints 
Tailwind, CSS and Figlet because that's the only links here. It actually wants links for all of these but we only have these two in our database here. Right now it prints uh, key in links but if we instead print db key here we get this beautiful 50 milliseconds it prints the already formatted list and everything for us. Um, just to prove that this works here, uh, it, it also looks for, uh, it found Tailwind and Figlet here. Uh, Hero Patterns is a link that we doesn't have. Uh, if we add that to the database here with link lord, uh, http colon slash slash, I don't know, it's probably heropatterns.com. Get this, uh, we save it as, and here it's, uh, well, Hero Patterns. And then I guess I save it in web and there you can see th this was all the 8,000 links here. We already got them here and I also added all my YouTube channel uh, links. This is actually just files uh, now. I don't know why the icons... No, it's because we are saving. Yeah, whatever. I'm getting sidetracked. Uh, we save it in web. There. Added heropatterns.com. Uh, as hero patterns in web and now if we do link lord with this page now it prints that link as uh, as well here because now it found that in the database um, if we would change here for example tailwind css this one mm, i wonder if that isn't a bad example here we take figlet instead here Figlet, we change this uh, to something else here. Now it will not include that in this list because then it's a... Even if it wants to find it, it doesn't find it. I think it took time there because it also re reloaded Hugo. You see, 50 milliseconds and, and, and it searches 8000 links here. I cannot overstate that. I think it's pretty cool that it is uh, that efficient. And I'm not taking credit for that. It's it's Orc. It's, it's Brian Kernigan and, and his uh, friends, you know. Uh, here is this uh, awesome list links uh, directory. If we draw a word count, uh, let's see here, we can take AMA here, which is, it's not that many links, 173, and we can do word count LAMA here, and it prints 173 lines in AMA. But if we instead do a word count line on each file in this directory, we get 8,000 uh, lines in total, so 8,000 links in our database. Um, so I'm thinking, I, I, I'm going to look into how to add uh, uh, Arc Wiki, I thought, as a little directory here with all links to every Arc Wiki page. Uh, I don't think it will make much difference in, in execution time or, or anything here. And, and that's really cool to be able to have that uh, in a row menu like that. Um, now we are happy here, we got uh, the lines we want to append to the files because now we actually want to inject these in into our markdown. Yeah, I guess now we have to get back and then do link lord this page. We want to inject these things here and I'm thinking appending it to the end of the, uh, the, f the file here. Let's see if we can find one of these links first. Mm, Tailwind CSS. So if we just append this, uh, the found missing links to the end of the file. Whoops. There save then it will yeah make the links works um, and now also i added these links here if i run link uh, link lord this page now we get an empty list because now these links are included in the document it doesn't need to search for it in the database or anything so great it works um, But uh, I would like to, to make it so that we can update links, you know, if, if, 
one of these links is wrong. This one is uh, probably wrong. Yeah, I can see now it's HTTP instead of HTTPS, uh, which I assume it should be. Um, then we probably update the link in the database and then it would be nice if we could rerun this uh, program to update the, the references from the database uh, in the document here. Uh, and I have found this little dirt tag uh, that we can, you can add uh, a, a link reference, name it whatever you want, you know, and uh, yeah, just to be sure, I like to add a, a pound symbol also here. So a blank link to nothing, a link reference, and, and link references. These are never rendered in the HTML here. You, you can add as many of these lines as you want. It will never affect the, the rendered uh, HTML. And that's a, uh, it's one way to, to create a, a comment in, in a Markdown document if you, if you would like to. But it also suits uh, our needs here uh, really well since we, we, we can easily find uh, uh, a, a line matching some kind of pattern. And I, I used this pattern before, so let's do it again. Uh, split on is equal to link lord was here. So what we will do is add, when we append the links to the end of the document, we first add an empty reference like this saying link lord was here and then we can test for that uh, both uh, when we are uh, parsing the file uh, append links here if we find a reference and the name is link lord is here then we stop parsing there and when we are done with the parsing here and it's time to append the links we split this file into two parts uh, and and then we can also use this um, this uh, string as the identifier where we want to split the file. So everything before this part, uh, keep that somewhere, uh, then remove everything else and then append uh, the links. And by doing so we can easily update the links and stuff. <clears throat> and it's also good because then we know which links are automatically, it's always good when you add, uh, when you add the stuff uh, automatically to a file to indicate that somehow this is auto-generated content. All right. Where are we now? Yeah. And this, as you can see, this is uh, quite a nice chunk of code here. Um, I think I want to do this. I copy this into its own function here. I think we only need... Yeah, we could... Oh, this is fine. This is good. We are using one, one vari variable here, trg, which we, which we doesn't have uh, in, in this function. But local trg is equal to dollar dollar one. Uh, and then we do this. Link list is equal to get links trg there perfect and then we can make a test here if uh, we get got any links if we found any links uh, and link list and then we can echo found some links do link lord this page now get links ah, get list uh, 
nothing happened because it didn't find any links remember the link list is empty now because all the links uh, available is already in the document but if we remove these um, these guys here now it says found some links but it doesn't do anything it doesn't append them to the document or anything uh, the dirty way here to do this uh, would be the dirty but uh, one way could be to just echo link list to TRG This kind of works. Uh, let's see here now it will add the Tailwind CSS link. There. Link lord, this page MD, execute the command, and there. Now it magically added the link here because we just append that to the end of the file. Um, but I want to make this a little bit more sophisticated. Uh, so, uh, as I just said, splitting the file and stuff here. Uh, so we can re-add links and update links and stuff if, if we do so. It's uh, it's actually nice to have this, and it's yeah we have we have milliseconds to to spare, you know. <coughs> so what we want to do is uh, uh, first we should create a, a temporary directory actually can store it as a local variable here or define it as declare uh, t deed temporary directory uh, and then we can extend this test here to t deed is equal to and then I will use a command that we haven't talked so much about but mk temp dash d this will create an uh, create a temporary directory somewhere. If link lo link list have a value, and if t deed uh, make temp deed d here succeeds, because in some um, weird circumstances, if you don't have um, permissions for the tmp deed or something like that, then this might fail. So it's good to put this uh, as a test as well here. But if this succeeds, and it, it, it will succeed for you, I, I bet. If this succeeds, then we, um, we we do something. And what we want to do is um, enter this uh, TMP deed. Or T deed. T deed. And then shell check nags me that we should do this exit after if if cd cd fails um, and another thing that i always do when i change directory inside a script is uh, to do so in a subshell and what we can do is actually do this instead of using curly braces here we use parentheses and make this block a subshell Okay, if we have reached this point in the script, uh, then uh, we are inside uh, the temporary directory here, which have a weird name and it exists somewhere in, in uh, um, the temp slash tmp under the root directory in your file system. Uh, but that's where we are right now. Uh, what we do now is uh, we make a copy of uh, trg, which is the file, you know. Uh, and we copy it to the current directory, which is td. Uh, then we try to split this file on our uh, pattern, and we will use uh, cSplit, which is kind of a simple little useful program. Non cSplit. Split the file into sections determined by context lines. So you can you can more or less uh, 
C split, then the file you want to split, and then uh, a pattern uh, what, what, that you are searching for. And then it will split the, the, that file into uh, zero or more uh, parts, depending on how many occurrences of the pattern it finds. And you, you can actually do some advanced things with this um, if you are, want to split a very large file on, on different patterns and stuff. But right now we, we are only searching for one pattern. And that is our um, uh, C-split file. And now uh, the file is not TRG because TRG, well, it actually is. Yeah, this is good. We, we got to this point here. I think I actually had this at the top of my notes here. Make TRG path to file absolute if needed. And that we need to do that. This will not work here. The CPTRG will not work uh, if uh, uh, the path to this file is uh, is not absolute. Uh, and by that I mean right now it isn't absolute because we we pass uh, we just pass this this page MD and that will work because we are in the same directory here. But when we are here, we are not in the same directory anymore, and we need the full path to, to uh, the file uh, and the full path to a file uh, the absolute path it always starts with a slash in a unix system everything um, is stored somewhere under the root directory you know so we could just do a test here if trg regular expression starts with a slash then it is an absolute path. But it, if it isn't, uh, trg is equal to the working directory, uh, and then we append trg to that. And now we got the absolute path to trg, which is great. And then when we execute C split here, we don't execute it on trg, we execute it on, on uh, trg inside this local directory here which is trg with the relative path meaning only the file name which could be written written like this uh, or you know what we, let's store that in in a variable as well you can call it name is equal to trg remove everything from the beginning of the variable uh, till the last slash and that will be then uh, trg will be only the file name here let's also add that as a local variable and then we split only the file name uh, the pattern uh, is a markdown comment you know so it will look like uh, uh, link lord was here we look like this <clears throat> I wonder now yeah I will cheat again or when I think about it maybe I doesn't even have it in this one God damn it. Or here we have it right. Sorry, verify title. Uh, uh, uh. Here is the C split. Yeah, here is the rig X. Yeah, that's right. I needed to add the regex as a variable. I, I, yeah, I had a vague remembrance that it was some weird syntax I needed to do there because of the brackets and stuff here. So, uh, 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 uh. so the pattern will look like this. We use uh, we use printf and create a format string here out of this thing here, 
and then just inject this split on uh, string that we have defined as a local variable at the top of the script here somewhere. Split on link lord was here, and it's good to keep that in a variable there, uh, so we could change it if we get annoyed by it, uh, which could happen. Store this as a local variable. Uh, reg x. Mm. Yeah, let's just do that for now to see what really have going on here. And then I will also uh, go to my TMP directory as we can see our TMP file getting created. Um, So make sure that it works. Yeah, that's why nothing happens. There. Um, here is the temporary directory. It just creates this random uh, string here for us. So, it, so uh, and that's why you should use this make temp command because then you are sure that your you create a new directory, you don't have to worry about the name or anything. It always creates a unique name for you. And here we have uh, a copy of our file and nothing has happened here because it couldn't find uh, the, the pattern that we were looking for because it doesn't exist in, in the document. Um, and if, if C, C split isn't successful um, then it doesn't do anything. Otherwise, it will create uh, new files, split the document into two or more new files here. Um, I'd like to do this. Make a test out of this C split command. If then something, right now it, it will always be false here because it never finds uh, uh, our pattern. And if it is false, um, or we could actually write this in a different way. Actually, should, yeah. Let's do this. So th this will always fail here now. Uh, but if it would succeed, then it would split it into two parts. Maybe we should add add the the, the um, just so we can test link lord was here pound symbol mm. ah. execute the command now there you can see we got a different output here uh, nothing seems to happen here because it actually created a new temporary directory here now. It will do a new name every, every time we execute the command. Uh, and now we can see we have these two weirdly named files here. This is the first part. Uh, which is the same thing up until that uh, link lord was here part. And the second part is... Uh, yeah, the rest of the document, like this. Um, so if the split is successful, then we uh, replace the original copy here, original copy, with the, the, the first part of, of, of the file. 
MV and it will always be named XX00 um, move that to name use the F option to overwrite it um, if it fails then it doesn't create any files and we just leave uh, this page uh, untou untouched here um, uh, but even no matter if it uh, succeeds or fails uh, this file will, will, will be what we want to append to because if this fails that means it, it doesn't have a link list at all and then we want to append the link list and then we do this um, I guess um, I guess we, we actually can copy this. Add a new line. Append this to name. Uh, and we also append link list. To name let's try this again there now we have a third director here not this ah forgot here you can see here I forgot the dollar so now it appended this to a, an empty file move this to temp directories execute it again you can see it's still fast, but now the, the C split here actually takes more time than than uh, the awk parsing 8,000 uh, <laughs> uh, entries. Now we can see we only have one entry here, this page, because it found that uh, link lord was here. Uh, open it, but now instead of uh, close without saving. Now it have appended the links, but it have also appended some weird stuff here. Yeah, of course, it's a reg regex, uh, what I copy pasted there. Uh, this is the format we want to use. Um, but then we got what we want, you know. And also remember here, in our version of it, I added some stupid text down here. This is removed, so everything below here will get replaced with a new link list. Um, when we have uh, done all this, we can now move and replace the old uh, markdown file, original one. Uh, with our new one here so move name to target then uh, uh, we could also remove uh, um, remove this temporary directory which is stored here. The path to the temporary directory is stored, uh, is uh, printed when you execute the command here. So we can just rmrf td and sure this isn't perfect since we are inside this uh, directory here now in the subshell but it doesn't matter because we exit out of the subshell here anyways it's 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 fine as long as we don't do any more file operations here we are fine um, remove the directory then it can be nice to print some confirmation here that something has happened because uh, otherwise we, we will just get the, these weird uh, things here now well it prints hello and uh, the C split uh, output is really weird and annoying in my opinion uh, so I like to, to mute it completely no matter if it fails or, or succeeds I, since we are do this if uh, anyway so uh, and I always forget how to write um, 
this correctly to redirect both standard out and standard error to to um, dev null. I guess it's enough with just standard error, but or maybe that's what we're doing here. Whatever. Uh, and since we just do this thing here, we we actually don't need this uh, if if then stuff here. Instead, we could just whoops. We we um, do this instead. If this passes, if this uh, is successful, then it will also move xx00 here to name. And it will be completely quiet. So now we will not get any output whatsoever here. If I remove the links, uh, and here you can see I did some testing, that's why we have these stupid dummy files here. Um, this page. Yeah, well, it, it will work now. Now it looks like this. We execute the command. 61 milliseconds. Looks like it updated stuff there. Now we got the links injected here in the page, but we don't get any confirmation whatsoever here. And that's, uh, I don't like that. So we should add some output uh, before we exit out here. And uh, we could just do simple, simple thing and write added, added links appended links but I I don't know why but I, I just think it's it's uh, nice uh, to to print how many links we, we we appended it would be even better I have thought about this but I whatever it's overkill and it's just who whatever you know you you will notice if the if uh, this link didn't get uh, added for example but it would be nice to, to print all the links it couldn't find in the database. It would make it easier to, to add extra. Maybe that's something also I could add to the finished version. Um, but to print how many links it actually found, uh, we can use word, word count again here uh, on the link list. So word count lines link list Dude. there we could even do two name Now it doesn't print anything because it didn't find uh, any links to add at all. And then I, can, I guess it's fine with the silent output. Uh, but let's see here, theme component. Uh, if we add that URL, a URL for that into our database, um, HTTP colon slash slash theme. Uh, we name this theme component. Yes, we add it to this awesome IRC, added the URL, blah, 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 link loaded this page, appended one link to this page.md and there now it is added, this page, ah, you know what happened there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is important. We should also in awk here. We have to have to stop uh, parsing the document when we reach the link lord uh, uh, string here. Otherwise, it will also uh, test for the links after link after this line here, and then it, it will find here. Oh, but it already have here Tailwind CSS and and theme component, and then it will remove that from from the. Uh, from the uh, array, meaning it will not print those links. And then it will remove any previous added links. So, so we really need to stop here. And I don't know what this slash is either. We need to fix that. Uh, 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 uh. 
get links append there is that trailing slash we don't want that and in the awk loop and this is the part uh, when we delete links uh, when we find a reference here we can test if uh, if dollar uh, i uh, is equal to split on uh, and then we also need to if that is true we just exit here and when we do exit it will go to the end block that's also very good to know about awk uh, that when you use when you have an end block it will execute that uh, before it exits so so that's great and that's when we print the list and that's exactly what we want i guess uh, no this is fine um but split on here is an unknown variable in awk here so we need to to pass that v split on is equal to split on There, now it added three links. Do it again. It will always add three links now. Because it will never test for those references that are at the bottom of the list. So, so yeah, appendant three. I think this is fine. And uh, two hours. Uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Have a great day, uh, a great New Year's Eve, um, and then let's um, make this, this decade great. Let's make times great again. <laughs> Bye.